Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Warriors of Future, a Hong Kong science fiction action flick from 2022. I remember seeing a teaser trailer for this movie, it must have been like five years ago, <laughs> not even joking, and for a while I was questioning whether or not the movie was actually finished. Well, it took long enough to get a release, so we're going to look at it. It's not every day we get a sci-fi movie out of Hong Kong that has a budget of over $50 million. So here's the Wikipedia plot summary for you. In 2055, wars have ravaged the Earth due to the prevalent use of advanced military robots, and global warming and pollution have destroyed the environment and ruined the atmosphere. As a result, many people are born with birth defects and die in large domes known as Sky nets are built to protect the surviving cities on Earth. During the construction of the sky net over B-16, a futuristic Hong Kong, a meteor lands in the city, and a giant alien plant, later named Pandora, emerges and causes devastation to the area around it, and it takes root. Now, this plant grows rapidly when there's rain, taking over more of the city every time it does so. However, it is discovered that the plant can purify the polluted air. A local mil military force scientist finds a way to alter the plant's genome to stop it from growing further, while also letting it continue to repair the atmosphere. And then you got two um, workers um, for a military force need to go in and uh, deliver a gene bullet to neutralize its growth. So that's your, your plot. Now, as you can probably tell, Warriors of Future has a lot of influences. Uh, the plot synopsis alone includes references to movies such as The Terminator, Avatar. Uh, later on, characters specifically mention Invasion of the Body Snatchers. There's a quick body temperature shot that reminded me of Predator. There's a little girl survivor, just like in Aliens, and so on. So, because of these elements, Warriors of Future could have been a really poor imitation of all of those movies, but I think it does just enough to not make the references <clears throat> a constant distraction. It does its own thing enough. So, for example, there are a few interesting little bells and whistles, like how the huge alien plant can grow rapidly with rain, and it takes over the city every time it does that. You know, it's different sections of the city whenever it rains which puts our protagonists on a time clock because there's a large storm approaching and if they fail to neutralize the plant before the storm hits, it might grow out of control and take over the whole city. Also, I like how the plant is not entirely negative uh, with its ability to, to purify polluted air. Um, now, whatever drama there is between the characters, it's pretty basic. Uh, filmmakers use flashbacks and pretty simplistic ways, and it's kind of awkward how they're shown or thrown in. Every character in the movie is pretty flat, really, and uh, that does limit the performances to a degree. And we do have some talented actors here. We got Louis Ku, Lao Ching Wan, Karina Lau, Nick Chung, all of which have given really good performances at various points in their careers. But they're not really given a lot to work with in this. It's lacking like a... Uh, I don't know, like a humanistic vibe or a little bit of, of multidimensionality, you know what I mean? It's hard to, like, connect with the characters, basically. And so the character work is, is a flaw for the film. Special effects are not as good as, like, you know, a $200 million Hollywood blockbuster, but I think they're good enough. They're good enough. The large mechanical stuff in the vehicles are cool-looking, all right? They look high-tech, realistic. The robo-suits are cool as well, but they kind of introduce them at the very beginning of the movie during the opening credits in a really bizarre, like, rushed, disjointed clip. It, it was very weird. I felt like they should have just left that clip out of the film, and then you, you introduce the robotic suits, like, in a real climactic way, uh, you know, a little bit later. But, uh, I don't know. Some of the visuals also reminded me of many Japanese anime from over the years, uh, from Appleseed to Ghost in the Shell. <clears throat> I 
And speaking of anime, when I initially like read the plot synopsis of Warriors of Future, the thing I thought of was the Japanese anime anthology from 1987 called Robot Carnival. And if you've seen that one, you might remember the nightmare segment where a man rides his bike through a city that's been overrun by machines, but the machines have like plant-like characteristics, like how they grow up into the buildings, in and through the buildings. I was anticipating some of those visuals in this film, and we do get some of that, which I was very happy with. The gigantic plant is definitely pretty cool. So, overall, I think the special effects and the visuals are a net positive to the movie. There, there are some, like, cartoonish shots at times, too, which I'll get to in a minute, but uh, it's mostly good. The action, it's nothing great. But it's pretty good overall. You know, we get some military operation stuff against a giant plant. Some fights against smaller monster drones, which reminded me of the liquors from Resident Evil, actually. And those fights are probably the least impressive moments because they're very frenetically shot. You know, almost too much, too much so. Uh, but there is some suspense with the characters walking through and exploring the plant-infested section of the destroyed city, which is uninhabited for the most part. And the second half is where the best stuff can be found. Like, there are some legitimately good set pieces in the second half of this movie. There's one where, like, they're wearing their robo-suits, right? And they're jumping through decrepit buildings uh, that could collapse at any moment. And their goal is to retrieve, like, some crucial information that's hidden in the, uh, the half-destroyed uh, city. And that's a good scene because there is some suspense to it, for sure. Uh, there's a very nice set piece involving a moving tank vehicle and a nasty-looking evil robot, which could be the highlight of the movie. That's a pretty cool scene. So overall, I think the action set pieces are a net positive. You know what I mean? Nothing great, but they're pretty good. Pacing is brisk enough, especially the second half. First half of this movie, I was like, this movie's all right. You know what I mean? It's, it's moving fast enough to not make me completely bored. But it's like, I don't know, this movie's still alright. And then when the second half hit and you get some of those bigger set pieces, it, it won me over uh, at that point. You know, this is not a movie that's going to knock your socks off, but it, it, it was actually a little bit better than what I was expecting going into it. I mean, I was expecting this to be just a mediocre, cartoonish, you know, uh, sci-fi thing. You know what I mean? But it is better than that. Um, I'm not going to be, like, chomping at the bit to watch it again anytime soon. But I actually think this is a pretty good futuristic action flick. I moderately recommend it. I would recommend maybe watching the trailer. Although it is kind of... The trailer is kind of spoiler-ish. I almost feel like if you're interested in like futuristic robo-suits and stuff like that, you may as well just watch it blind. Because the, the visuals might surprise you a little bit if you don't see the trailer. So I might recommend that for you. But if you're not sure, then just watch the trailer and make that determination for yourself. It's currently available on Netflix. So, hey, have at it if you want. Let me know what you think if you've seen it. And as always, I will see you next time.